Hey guys, this is Arts of Wisdom. My name's Diane. Thanks for coming by. This is going to be a quick video, I promise. I'm going to try and keep it under 15 minutes. Um, yesterday I did a long one about um, multiple things. Cabinet picks, fraud, Trump's health, a bunch of stuff if you guys want to see that one. And I got a couple questions that I wanted to attend to. Mark Root, or Rutt, uh, the new NATO uh, secretary, general I think he's, his title is, and he went to Mar-a-Lago. And some a couple of people had asked me what happened there. I also looked into the ambulances yesterday, which uh, it's a little uh, sketchy what they are doing down there with the ambulances. And you can also look at that in the last video. I'm also going to look at um, Mika Brzezinski, Joe Scarborough, a week and a half or so ago after Donnie won. They went down there. And they've been anti-Trump for years, although they've been friends prior to his election back in um, 20, uh, 2016. They were friends, New York friends. And now that they're, I, you know, I don't know. I'm going to look into that. I wanted to see, too. Somebody had asked me, I want to see, what was the point? A lot of people are not happy. I'm very disappointed. And I don't know their um, agenda or goals. And it feels a little not self-fulfilling they need to help themselves during this time a lot of people are you know going to kiss the ring and going to bow at the throne and all that and i don't know maybe they are so i'm going to get into their energies um one of my wonderful uh viewers and clients chris piazza she's she wrote a long lovely uh, uh comment about the democratic party and how the years have gone by and we've lost track of the middle class, the blue collar people that have been the heart of the Democratic Party. And then on top of it, you know, all the the, the lying and the cheating and the people believing those lies, the voters, some young men, like I said, and there's also people that Trump gives permission to hate because they've been waiting because they've had to be in the shadows for decades. Got a large group of that. Somebody also had asked me, how could we not have that many voters? Trump didn't gain any, it says, they said. And true, he has got about the same amount of voters. According to the numbers, Harris didn't get as much. People say there's fraud in the voting machines there was ballots were stolen and some of you will probably say that i do think there was some fraud again i'm going to say this again there was fraud and they're working on it the republicans are non-stop working on how to um, rig the system through um, gerrymandering voter suppression someone else even mentioned by um, going through the rolls and eliminating votes and saying no you're not registered and or you haven't been registered they're very, very organized in the most devious way. So that's our reality. And they've got a new um, system, a new organization type thing that is looking into all the software and all the machines. And I know that they're eventually going to, besides just chipping away at the votes, they're going to come up with a way to rig it even more. Honestly, that's the feeling I got. And I'm sorry. And I am not... A person who likes Donnie, the orange uh, menace, but I do want to live in our reality. I want to be honest in every time that I see something. So we have to live in what is right now. We can fight and resist, and I'm planning on that. And sometimes my quietness or maybe my soft-spokenness um, may look like I am weaker, perhaps, Please don't confuse those two things with resistance. Some people don't have to scream to resist, okay? People don't have to swing a baseball bat, although I would love to swing a baseball bat at a certain person who shall be nameless. Just just a little graze across the top of the head, I think. Would be my... So hopefully I'm not going to get in trouble. Anyway, so let's start right now. All right, before I begin, I wanted to remind you guys, I have these bracelets. I get them from Otter Spirit. I have a, a discount thing in my description box. I love them. I got the Capricorn pack 
I have a Capricorn moon and I have like earth signs, Virgo, um, Pluto's in Virgo. I have a bunch of stuff. So I'm kind of Capricornian, even though I am a Leo with an Aquarius ascendant for those of you who do astrology. So I got the Capricorn pack. Plus I got a turquoise and they each have high grade natural gemstones and every one a, a portion of it goes to the wild utter foundation so i love them i have citrine red jasper aventurine are in the capricorn pack and they all have these little dangly things with a little baby otter on it and then i got the turquoise i feel like that's good for my throat chakra they all are uh, lined with different chakras different energy spiritually focused oh. and i get the mini ones sometimes there's really fat ones i looked right. into mark root he's a netherlands uh, prime minister or president for 14 years and now he's a NATO secretary general. Why did he go to Mar-a-Lago? So I pulled cards as I was sitting earlier. Um, I got, I'll show you what I got. I got the weaver. Remember somebody who weaves the story. I got the shepherd. Trying to shepherd, do you think? So weaving, I think this is how I interpreted it. He is trying to create, um, a new cloth for NATO and Trump part of it. And he wants Trump to be a part of it, even though Trump has said, doesn't think we need to be part of NATO. Honestly, it's because he's not getting anything out of it. The United States, he can't think beyond transactions. You give me this, I give you that. What does NATO give the United States in his head is like, well, you guys are over there in Europe. You don't give us anything. All we're doing is giving you money doesn't understand the democratic process, service, taking care of the world, doesn't understand it. Um, the other card I get is Acolyte, which is learning from a master, somebody who's um, taking in all of this information, you know, an apprentice type person. And then I also got the gambler. So he find consensus in the Netherlands because of the way their system is. And they're always compromising some people don't get what they want other people do and it's always a balance so i think in his mind he was doing that so when i go into mark root to rut i'm not sure how to pronounce his name i apologize but the view i saw when i saw his person i thought okay he is a manager he is um preemptively meeting him to lay the groundwork for the future of nato and I felt like he was being very positive and reminded me a little bit of Zelensky and how Zelensky wanted to um, suck up to Trump just because it's the only thing that is going to benefit that he does. They may not believe it, but so when I get into uh, Donnie's energy, meeting this man from the NATO organization of you know, the NATO Alliance, it's like, all right, I'll meet you, but he doesn't. The picture I saw, Trump was smiling ear to ear, but the feeling I get when I look at this man from Trump's perspective and I see him, it's like, all right, um, what do you want? He's not irritated, but it's more like, I got stuff to do, kind of. Let's talk, let's move on. Makes me also feel, as Trump, that like, is it contempt? A disdain? In the back of my mind going, oh, he needs something. So if he needs something that bad, we got to play that. I'm going to use that. If he wants us to be part of that that bad, they got to give us something. So it's almost like Trump has a little scorecard going, all right, he wants us to stay. And it's not logical the way he thinks, but this is how Trump does. He wants us to stay, then he, they're going to owe us something. Or they're, we're going to get something for this. And he's already, and I know he talked to some of his other security personnel that he plans on having in the White House. This other guy did, Mark Rutt. Rutt. Trump kind of put him off on there. I know they spoke for maybe an hour, but I think he put Mark, this new person, Rutt, to see these other people, security people. They are more um, engaging. They are more, um, okay, let's talk about it. But they're not smart and I feel like I when I'm looking at him, this Mark, the Secretary General, from the person, the secretary person on the United States, Trump's pick, talking to him, it's like he doesn't understand it. Like he doesn't get it. Whatever this guy is saying to him, 
um, it's like he's not smart enough. Does that sound? It's like he's not understanding all the ins and outs of the security issue that this guy's referring to. I don't know if it's the money or why he has to, you know, why we have to be part of it. It's more about he doesn't get it. Like he's ignorant of the process. Um, is there anything else that he wants to tell him? Somebody had mentioned uh, or just I read somewhere or heard that he has something on Trump, this guy, and that he wants to make sure he knows it. Okay, if I'm looking at from his perspective, Mark Root, he sees, <laughs> he sees Trump's face is very tan and orange. It's funny. He really, in his mind's eye, he sees him as that. Um, and he almost, he makes a bunch of decisions based on when they meet. He's looking at him going, okay, this guy is vain. This guy um, appreciates, you know, um, compliments. You need to kiss his butt. He is that guy. And this man is assessing him. He's assessing all the little tools because he's done that before in all these different um, organizations or compromising between all these different parties in the Netherlands. So he under he's getting a feel for him to play him as well. Trump's wants to play him for another reason, but this um, secretary general, he's like, okay, he's very vain. He likes gold and shiny things and he needs to know he wins. He needs to know he wins. So this guy's saying in his mind, as I'm looking at Trump going, okay, I've got to say things. I've got to make it seem to, to him that he's winning. So he's already making plans to manipulate or weave well, the weaver. He's weaving the storyline for Trump to be able to feel like he's winning he's getting it he's getting something over him so trump says he's getting something over him. he's decided and this guy's saying oh yeah sure you're getting something over me but he's not he's got other plans he understands he's he's smarter why did mika and joe they was so disappointed why did they go to mar-a-lago we watch morning joe every day i've been really disappointed i watch it for about five minutes and they repeat the same things over and over again i go okay and it's trump bashing it was for months on end um, and none of it was wrong. It was just a lot of it. So I would just get the first 20 minutes. I'm like, all right. But they had a lot of intellectuals on there, which I found interesting. And um, Mika. I feel I'm in her energy and I feel, I hear the click, click, click of my heels. I don't know why. Um, but I feel she, why is she scared? It's not quite scared, but she's, concerned she's concerned that again it's like the other guy where they have to create this dynamic where they can show that trump you're gonna it's gonna be okay you're gonna win we're sorry they're not sorry they're not sorry but they're gonna they went down there they said to engage him because you have to talk to your enemies you can't you know she doesn't, she has a dready feeling in her belly. Like, it's not scary. It's not, it's concern and dread. I have a dread feeling in my belly when I, when she's there. Um, not so much she's going to hurt her, but it's like she's mad that she has to do this. Is she mad at Joe Scarborough or why? She doesn't like it. She feels like it's wrong. But they both went together. Um, but she feels like she... Why does she have to do that? What if she just said no and they just continue to? I think it's a combination. I think Joe's history in Congress, Joe Scarborough's history in Congress, and what he knows, like he always talks about Bill Clinton, even though Bill Clinton, you know, you couldn't agree with him. He would always just talk to you to continue the conversation and you come up with an agreement to disagree or there wouldn't be this animosity. So his mind he is working it that way. Joe Scarborough is, is it something to do with the show? Um, I do think he's afraid. They're afraid they're going to, all those sponsors or all the advertisers are going to jump ship because of Trump's pressure, his uh, cabinet's pressure on the FCC and saying what, 
Really? Is it that? Are you really trying to save your jobs? It's the same idea as they, they have to make him seem like he's winning. And the FCC, or make it, they're going to explain to him what they've been doing and how and why in a way that, and he's a, you know, he doesn't, he holds it against you, but he also doesn't, he understands the game too. Dominance. We all know that somebody needs to be dominant. There can only be one winner, right? I'm not going to make 15 minutes. I see right now I'm already at like 15. Why did Mika and Joe go? Why did they go to Mar-a-Lago? Oh my gosh. Dominance. That's so weird. That fell out the same thing. So they are scared of his dominance. So it is. This one feels like it needs to come up to isolation. They are afraid that um, the isolation part is they will be isolated. They will be set out to pasture kind of in a way. And he's con Joe Scarborough is convincing himself about talking and making conversations with people you don't agree with just to maintain. And I'm not, I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but um yeah, and then here's the sacred space, which them looking at their nest and maintaining it. Um, he's convincing himself this is what they're doing. It's a half and half. They want to save their butts, but they also, she doesn't want to do it. She didn't want to do it. I also think part of it could be, too, is the producers or people from the show, they all had a conversation. I know they seem like they did it on their own, which they did, but I feel like there was a conversation and they were concerned, so they decided just to be preemptive and go for it. Oh, that's disappointing. And then finally, the Judge Mershon, I forgot to mention that. He also, in the vicinity or the arching umbrella theme of disappointment, Judge Mershon, my dark black or dark chocolate backstop, who I always thought followed the law, and that really was a serious person who oversaw the um, fraud charges or the hush money trial, which Trump got 34 counts conviction against the felon. And in the past, I know that he kept pushing it, or I think he was it was politically pressured for him to push the sentencing, and then it went after the election. Um, and now that I'm in his energy, it, oh, this is going to be weird. Because normally I feel like he's very law by the law and he doesn't, he doesn't manipulate the law. He just follows it. So he was concerned about how to sentence him before the election. And now that it's after, I think he, then before he was going to give him like four months of house, you know, something small, some token. Um, now... The prosecution and the defense are agreeing that, and Judge Mershon said they're going to, what's the word, push back the sentencing indefinitely. In fact, the defense is even going to ask to, the case be dismissed like December 3rd, and both sides have to come together and say that. And the prosecution is saying they they may do they're implying they may do that because of his presidential immunity is that horrible or what it's infuriating infuriating so if you have money and if you lie and you cheat and steal guess what you get away with anything you can shoot somebody on fifth avenue right that's the thing oh it's, money wins money wins and it's so so sad and so aggravating but when I look to the I feel Judge Mershon and I'm in his energy and I feel this sense of relief because he's been seriously concerned about doing this and he didn't know how to uh, sentence him he knew he could but he just was going back and forth it was a lot and he was concerned about what would happen during the sentencing so because they both agreed both sides agreed he's relieved that's the feeling I got is that he doesn't um, how do you feel about 
the immunity and this being dismissed entirely. I don't know if he'll, even if they push back the sentencing indefinitely, it'll be at least four years unless something happens um, that Trump will be sentenced and then there'll be appeal. So uh, I think he might, will you dismiss it? I don't think it's somewhere between dismissing and tabling the sentencing indefinitely. I think there's something in the middle and I think he's going to land there. I don't know what that is exactly. He's relieved for himself. And the law is out of his hands kind of thing. That's how you feel. So on our way out, one last little thing. I wish you guys well. And as we go through these just days and hours sometimes where you feel like you might be too scared to even look to see what the news is. Just remember, all you have to do is keep aware maybe once a week or you don't have to dive in and swim in the nasty mucky soup where it's scary and dirty <laughs> and you need a shower afterwards. But you can just find out what happens in the most neutral way possible and then Resist. Write to your congressman, call your senators, your local council, whoever it is. Because your voice matters. Right now it feels like we're being dominated and bullied. Just remember, it's the media presents this stuff. There's a lot of drama out there that even here, I, you know, I think people online are so scared. They're, you know, I'm adding subscribers because I think some people just want to feel better. And I'm fine with that. I'm happy to be here because I feel like we all need to have each other and uh, have this community of shared support. Um, but at the same time, we only have to go day by day, minute by minute. Um, and well, my old, my son's old karate teacher was that used to say inch by inch, is a cinch mile or yard by yard is really hard so let's just go inch by inch <laughs> just day by day let's not you know assume the worst we'll deal one thing at a time as it comes okay and um live in the light we raise our vibrations it does help it really and truly does ask for guidance from your spirit guides and archangel michael because he's excellent at cutting away those negative thoughts Okay, guys, till next time. Take care.